Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Art Whisper 88. Now in this episode, I want to demonstrate the concept of learning how to think in layers. That's number one. And learning how to visualize things backwards. Because as you know, whatever you put Whatever mark you put, even it's a little line or a drop of paint, it's going to come out backwards in your final print. So there's a little bit of mental gymnastics here that you have to visualize. Um, when you're a beginner, it's a good idea to set your drawings down on paper. That's what I used to do. I have a little sketchbook and then I make sketches and then I flip them so they're backwards. So you just have to keep that in mind when you do printmaking. All the results that you do on your printing plate are in reverse. So I'm going to start with my little squirt bottle here of orange paint. I think this is um, Amsterdam. And uh, the downside of this type of delivery method is that the nozzle tends to clog after a while. So you ha just have to make sure that this is clear. I use a, a very fine uh, nail or pin to unclog this nozzle. So I'm going to do some marks. Okay, that's my first layer. And here's another thing. You have to learn to be patient because if you want to do layers on a gel plate, you have to wait. You have to wait for this to dry. Otherwise, you're going to have a little bit of a mess. So I have here my desk fan. Just to let this dry a bit so when I apply the second layer this is not going to smear. There's an exception if you want to smear it on purpose that's another story but I just want to show you how to do layers one after the other and the final product is you will be able to print this all at once so uh, that will come later. So stick around and I will be right back. You know what? On second thought, I think this will be interesting if it's blotted over with a tissue paper. So that's what I'm going to do. By blotting this, I'm shortening the dry time and I'm putting marks on my tissue paper, which I will use later. In fact, I'm going to use um, one of my prayers to help me. Okay. There. So on with the show.
Okay, it's been about five minutes under the fan. Now I have here my Mars Black Blicrylic. This is one of my favorite paints. It's very economical. It comes in a, in a very nice large bottle. This is... This is like a 8 ounce bottle, if I'm not mistaken. And I have made a mixture of the Blicrylic with some water. Now I'm just eyeballing it with the water because um, every, every time I print, I really don't measure. I kind of just use my judgment. But roughly, it's about a tablespoon of water to this this dab of paint. This is not much because a little goes a long way. So I will do some circles as usual. This is a very simple graphic design of circles and lines. I can't seem to shake this cold, so you'll have to bear with me. So again, I'm going to air dry this. Okay, here is deep yellow. Now I may I have a correction to make. This is a pint of liquid, which is 16 ounces. I get confused with the imperial measurements used in the US and in Europe they give like this one for example. This is given in milliliters. So this is 4.1 fluid ounces, which is 120 milliliters. Um, because this is made in Europe, this is, I think, Amsterdam is made in the Netherlands. Whereas this Blicrylic is using an American measuring standard. So it's done in pints which is, if I can remember right, 16 ounces. So uh, I correct myself. This is not 8 ounce, this is 16 ounces, which means it's a very good value. Um, I think I paid like 650 for this jar. So anyway, I will use this as my major color. And then I will add some Venetian rose. So I am using pastel colors to contrast with the black graphic elements here. Okay, and hopefully this is enough paint to spread over the surface of this 16 by 20 plate. So we'll start with the yellow. Now this time I'm not as careful to keep the colors separate. I want them to blend somehow. Because 
because the purpose of my using this is to pick up the black layer that's underneath. Now there will be a little bit of smearing, but that's okay. That adds to the texture of the piece, which makes it uniquely a printed image. Again, I will add some texture with my silicone brush as so I think this adds a lot of organic movement okay Again, I am using Blick Cold Press watercolor paper. I did a little more research on the difference between cold press and hot press. And cold press paper is a little more absorbent than hot press because cold press has these little indentations, like a tooth, they call it a tooth. It's a texture, kind of like a pebbly, like the texture of linen or canvas. It's a fabric kind of texture. Uh, it's a woven fiber kind of texture. And that is what enables the paper to to grab onto the particles of pigment. Now hot press is very smooth as a rule. It's like a plate finish. Um, one example is like Bristol plate where the, the surface is very slippery and, and smooth and it's not as absorbent. Now there are pluses and minuses for using hot versus cold. That's just a matter of taste. And that also depends what kind of process you are using. But I favor cold press paper over hot press because I do enjoy the added textures. I think it makes it even more interesting as an image. So I will leave this on for a good five to six minutes and I will be right back. Okay, it's been about five to six minutes. This is the exciting part. And I hope I don't tear my paper. Yeah, I see a few tears showing up. I should have oiled this paper last night, but I didn't. I usually pull this from right to left. I'm doing this backwards. Yep, I do see some tearing. Okay, but it's it's not that bad. So I say to myself. I think it's a very interesting image. 
Again, it reminds me of the torn posters on the subway walls back in the 80s and the 90s. So I will air dry this. Actually, it left a very nice ghost print. And let me see if I can work with that. This is lime green. Manganese blue. And some pearl blue. Oh, different colors have different densities. Some are thicker, some are looser. So that's another factor that I have to deal with. Okay, now based on the previous pull, I have to be a little more careful about leaving the paper on too long. So I may just cut down the time to about four minutes. And when I'm done doing this printing session, I will promptly oil the plate. That will be another video. That's just part of shop maintenance. Okay, let's see what we have here. This looks more like a landscape. We'll air dry this and just keep going. This is cadmium red light. It's one of my favorite colors to use. This is magenta, something I rarely use.
This is alizarin crimson. Okay, let's see what we have here. I like this. I think it's better behaved than the other one. Very cool. Yep. Very nice ghost print. So I will air dry all three of these. They're all very different. Almost, they look almost done by different people. Let me air dry this. I'll be right back. You know what? I'm going to do something I have never done before. This is gloss glazing liquid. I guess you can call it uh, gloss medium. I'm going to use it as a pickup material. See if I can pick this up and transfer it without adding more colors. This may work, this may not work, but I won't know until I try it. Let's 
it's a little tricky to attempt because it's clear so I can't really see what I'm doing that well. I'm just making sure that the entire plate is coated with it. Okay, I will try to transfer this to the first pool. <clears throat> to this one. And I hope I don't tear it to shreds. Okay, at this point, I'm willing to try anything. If it means that I will learn something, it's worth it. It's, to me, that's the best way of learning is to try it yourself and not, not wait for someone else to tell you what to do. Okay, let's see how we did here. I did pick up a little bit. It's, it's not as uh, plain. There's like some subtle nuances. And it kind of hides the tears too. So that I'm happy about. So anyway, I will air dry this and recap. Okay, I went through my box of tissue paper scraps and I assembled this off camera. And I think this will complete the first image. It uh, takes care of the vacant spaces. I will start with the little guys. So I find that the, well, a good way, a good rule of thumb when composing a collage is to kind of mentally map out the vacant spaces, positive and the negative spaces. They don't necessarily have to be equal but there has to be some kind of, I would say, dialogue or tension between the negative spaces and the positive spaces. That makes the image more interesting to look at. And like everything else, it comes with practice. Now I know there are many beginners who are watching and learning as they go along. And the only advice I can give is to keep trying. It's not an easy undertaking, but like any other effort in life, you just have to keep at it and get better at it. And don't be discouraged when people 
criticize you because that's that's to be expected when you're an artist there will always be some wannabe art critics who know it all and have to tell you how to do stuff the best person to tell you what to do things is yourself so just remember that Okay, I think this completes the picture. So I will air dry this and move on to the next one. Okay, this is the second piece and I will put this here. Now oh, this piece is semi-transparent so it will still show what's underneath.
Okay. We'll let this dry and then I think the last piece doesn't need anything else. This is pretty much a standalone print. In my opinion, I think you will agree with me. So I will wait for the other two to dry and then I will recap. Okay, everybody, here is my favorite part of this video where I get to show you the final result. Now, this is the first pool. And here are the incomplete spaces where the image did not transfer. But I think it does add to the interest of this composition. Here is a close-up. And I do like this kind of texture. Now this is caused by the texture of the paper. This is a cold press watercolor paper and it creates these kind of like a pebbly dotted texture which otherwise would not be possible on a flat surface. Okay, that is the first print. <clears throat> Here is the second one. Now, I was tempted to change this from an abstract composition to a landscape. It, that would be very easy to do because the background is like uh, almost like a view of a river or a lake but I decided to stay with the abstract composition now the curving lines may be evocative of water but I like to make this remain ambiguous so the viewer can ascribe or assign any kind of meaning that they want rather than have me dictate to them what this is supposed to mean. That is the second piece, and here is the last piece, which I think is a standalone piece. It is uh, very busy. It has enough going for it that I don't think it needs anything else. And it has a nice mix of color. A lot of these colors are unexpected 
and I'm glad that they remained uh, separate. They didn't mix together and form uh, mud. So I hope you like this experiment with color. Uh, please hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. And please check out artwhisper88.com. Thank you so much for watching and subscribing. And I hope to see you next time.